hello uh, i just wanted to come on here and quickly swatch some new watercolors for you um i have always used schmincke watercolors and i absolutely love them i've used a couple of like um different ones from tubes but mainly schmincke certainly schmincke in the pan um kind of format other than like those really cheap ones you get at school in the red tin um i've never actually tried a different one and then and i usually use half pans as well but these are full pans and i'm really excited i bought myself a little um like holder tin uh, and it holds 12 and i bought 17 so i need to try and get 17 down to 12 for in here and then i'll just keep um the spares kind of away somewhere useful and handy but i wanted to pick my favorite 12 to go in here so let's firstly unwrap them and then we will swatch them you may be thinking okay what's made you want to get some new ones or try something different and it was only because i am in love with the sketchbook pages of and i'm really sorry if i get this wrong daria you lily um i'm so sorry if that's i feel like i butchered the name um and it's not to create sketchbook pages like hers she has an amazing style which i love um but it's quite different to mine but it's just more the colors the colors seem pretty bright and thick and um i just suddenly made me think i haven't actually ever had a tin of different ones so yeah here we go Okay, here goes. So I remembered last second to lay them on top of their packaging um, until I know what they are, because otherwise I'll completely forget what color is meant to be what. So let's have a go. I'm just using my moleskin sketchbook and let's start with this mint. I'll write these down as well. So I love how thick it is um, to begin with. It's a bit like almost gouache-y. Um, maybe not quite as bright as I was thinking from that color, but let me just check. My brush is really clean. I do like how bold it is. mint. This one is indigo and that is so such a lovely indigo actually. That is so rich. Oh I don't know how you can't like not like that colour. That is lush. That will definitely be making its way into the um, pan and I really didn't actually almost get this because I was like oh I can just make an indigo and then I was like actually a good indigo is so nice to have like ready to go. This one is azure, azure blue so this should be quite bright. I wanted like a mid you know like your classic blue so that when I'm mixing colours because um, I love to mix watercolours is that nice mid-tone. This one feels a little bit different to the other paints. It almost feels like a bit grainy, but I wonder if it's just because it's like not activating quite the same. I think that will look amazing when we mix it, but I want to just keep them fresh for now. So that one is azure, azure blue. And this one is Payne's Grey, which I appreciate isn't a blue. And I, oh, again, almost didn't get this. But actually that, again, like the indigo is a lush color. They're actually drying quite quickly as well. I love the tones in that. That is a really nice Payne's Grey. And let's move over to 
We've got a white, which I don't need to test, but that is just a nice titanium white. It won't show anything on here, but it's nice for mixing. Then I've got a green earth. I often make this kind of color, but I thought it might be quite handy to just have a pan of one. And then it's like always the same and you can then kind of brighten it with yellows or kind of deepen it with blues. Then I've got an umber. So this should be quite brown. I don't know quite why. I, I, in my head I hadn't gone for like quite as muddy colours as this. I thought I'd gone for more like browns. Um, but again, that might be something I can like make brownier with this like English red. Um, but I don't know if that's going to make it into the pan. It's not my favourite, but I'll write it down. Just green. Again, like the blue, I wanted a nice green that I could like mix and send either way. That is a really nice green by itself as well, actually. So it's not too like in your face. Then I've got a natural black again, just quite good for mixing. Really like how dark that is. And actually it's got a bit of like blueiness to it. A um, bit of a midnight black, I would say, like a Derwent midnight, midnight black. Uh, that is called neutral black, sorry, not natural. Then English red, let's see. I can't remember what I thought this was. I felt like I thought this was a, a real red red rather than a brown, but I could be wrong. I ordered it a couple of weeks ago, this. And it's just arrived. So it could be that I was thinking that I need that nice kind of um, ready brown. That is a really nice colour. Per Perline Violet. That is gorgeous. Not sure what I'm going to use it for, but I will find something. Then this is a neon pink, so this should be really bright. Oh yeah, look at that. That is amazing. You never normally get colours like this with watercolour, and that is fantastic. I love how bright that is. I feel like it's going to mix really well as well. But then I bought a softer pink, which is pink peony, which I'm hoping is going to be a really nice. I think again, I may not use this one a lot um, as is, but I think if I mix it slightly with a tiny bit of like a orange which I didn't even buy I remember I had it in my basket and then I took it out but maybe I can make an orange I thought this was going to be redder I feel like I would have got a red red and maybe I misunderstood the coloring of this one because making orange is going to be difficult now um we have got a mocha here I actually really like the neutralness of this and I feel like I can use it a lot in landscapes and like cities, like walls. Okay, three more. We have got a Naples Flesh, so a really nice light pink. Again, I think in landscapes and things as well as like these two are quite good skin tones for certain skin tones but I think quite a handy one to have that Indian yellow please be yellow yes really yellow hopefully again this mixes well I'm annoyed with myself I don't have a proper red but that's a nice bright yellow. And finally, a yellow ochre because yellow ochre is so handy to have. The 
this one feels quite like um, watery. I wonder if it hasn't got like, I need to just work into it a bit more. But it's not feeling nearly as thick as some of the others. And it's quite interesting how some of the paints are really quite thin and then others feel a lot thicker, especially the darker colors feel really rich. Whereas this one is kind of taking a lot to give anything. What a strange um, selection of colours I went for. If anyone in the UK knows a good place to get these from, I might, if I like them, I might just swap out, like get a couple of brighter colours. In my head I got some really bright ones, but actually on the page there's only four that I'm seeing that are bright. But that is a really nice um, colour palette, the pink peony, Indian yellow, neon pink and mint. So now let's mix them. I'll just wait for these to dry. Okay, sorry, new day. Um, the surf was looking really good. So I went for a surf while the paint dried. It's definitely dry now, so we can turn the page. And let's see how they mix. I would say, even though there's some really nice colours here, and they may sway me when they can with the mixing, but um, I am not swayed from Schmincke just yet. Because um, they just don't feel like they have the same quality. If I just quickly, this is the same book that I did these in, and that was all from that little travel set, and I just love love the colours so much. These definitely are thicker, so if you want like a thicker watercolour, um, definitely have a look at these. This whole like um, order, so all these paints and the holder and shipping from Switzerland I think it came from, or Spain, maybe it's Spain actually. Um, I don't know where I got Switzerland in my head from. Um, it costs 50 one pounds or something um i think these pans were like two pounds something each which is very cheap for a whole pan i think the schminker ones um what color? Yeah. i think the schminker ones are uh maybe double that for half a pan um like half the size i don't feel like they mix as nicely I always want to like make really nice videos that's like, oh, I really want that, but I guess some things aren't gonna be as good. And that is why we test, I guess, if everything was always good, it kind of, I don't know. It's, um feels, I guess, a bit more real that not everything I get works how I kind of hope. It's weird how thin this green earth is. Don't get me wrong, they're nice. I look at the colors. Um, like if you're wanting some more cost-effective watercolors, these could be really nice. I do really like the neon pink because for, oh, I've just added green into there. Things like, um, uh, things like boys on boats, our, or anything where you need a bit of like luminous, like a really bright pop of flower. Um, you can see. So we can make a bit more of a red using that dark pink. And then this English red, that does make a nice red actually. Thank goodness, which means I should be able to make an orange. Yes. You. my planning was correct and actually like they kind of look brighter when you're mixing them you can make some like brighter colors um, and like the fleshy color I really liked you can kind of take down that yellow a bit with it if you wanted like more of a pastel yellow 
and this mocker is really nice. The illustrator that I mentioned earlier, whose name um, I can never pronounce, which is Daria, um, she, I think she's popped hers, like she's kind of got I think six in like just a little vintage tin. So it might be like quite good to do it that way where you just pick like a few, like a few bright ones or something that you can't find somewhere else and then it's quite like mixing, that's quite nice. This, the flesh with the azure, azure blue, that's made a really nice tone. Maybe these will, are, are a slow burner and they'll, um, they'll come round. I'm definitely keeping them. I'm definitely gonna, um, obviously I'm not gonna throw them away, but I mean rather than giving them away. Um, I think I just need to like experiment with them a bit more and because it's all very well like doing swatches and things, but sometimes you need to actually try and use it in day-to-day -day life to then know what it's really like. Let's add a bit of yellow to this. Um, I find it so confusing that the yellow doesn't look yellow. That Indian yellow looks really brown. Make some kind of murky greens using the blues. I wanna try and make a, a kind of a nice fresh green. So obviously I'm mixing on the page here. You can mix in your palette when you actually pop it, if you popped it in. Probably needs a little bit of blue in there. It's not quite doing the light green that I hoped for. Um, maybe it's that they don't necessarily mix quite as well as others and like, it does like show to me that Schmincke you pay more for. Although the little set I think, I know you get way less paints but you can make such nice mixes. Um, what was that? I think that's like often on sale for like 40 pounds I think um, but I know the bigger ones are like a hundred and something but their paints are so nice and this has kind of backed up that for me that it's not just like kind of marketing or whatever that there's just something about how they go on your paintbrush and go on the page and mix and and it's weird if some paints like these, some of them are really thick, like the paint's grey, and then others like the raw umber just don't seem to want to like have that same density. So that's quite confusing because you get used to like, oh, okay, this is gonna give this effect, and then when another colour doesn't, um, yeah, it does make it make it harder. But there's definitely some nicer tones. I wonder. I wonder if like there's something, different ways of working that I can try to kind of um, see if I can use it, like use them in a different way. But so far, Schmincke is definitely where it's at. I mean, I've got some nice colours on here. There are some nice colours. Um, let's see how the white goes. I think it's more about like how it feels um, and like when it feel, it doesn't feel as high a quality. Um, so if you're looking for some really nice watercolor paints, I would personally recommend holding out until you can get those Schmincke ones. However, these are not bad. I wonder how they compare to like Windsor and Newton. Um, but I am using it on watercolour paper as well. This should be like the prime paper for, for these paints to sing. And there are some nice tones. I'm liking how some of them are kind of cracking. So maybe it's something I've just got to like go with a bit more. Um, but I'm going to leave that there and I will give you any updates as I have them. I just need to pick my colours now. So I might do that on a little, little time lapse. Um, and yeah, that's then me done just as this little X something. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks so much. Bye.
I'm just coming back on because I may have judged these too harshly. Now that they've dried, you can see some really nice textures in here. I think they definitely feel different to um, like lay down. I feel like Schmincke feel really smooth and lovely, lovely to, to kind of uh, paint with. But these do feel different. However, there are some really nice tones like the cracking happening in there is really lovely. And when you compare it to here, which is my Schmincke. This is the little travel case. I still really, really love these. I think they're still my fave and I love how they blend. Um, however, the colors, like there are some still some really nice tones in here. Um, you can kind of see the difference in like how it layers. These don't kind of sit on top like this quite as much and have that lovely double layer but there are some really nice colors in there. So I think I just need to keep using them and have a go and see, um, see how they work with other materials. But I hope you really enjoyed it and um, I'll link the wand testing the Schmincke ones below uh, the video. Thank you so much, bye.